So do you remember last week when I said this? I'm feeling good. Aside from the, aside from the inflammation in my knee that keeps popping up, you know, I'll take that over what I had a few years ago where it was both my feet, my knees, and my hips. That was a million times worse than this. So I'll take this little bit of information for now. Clearly, irony has a sense of humor. <laughs> because the next day after shooting that video, the inflammation that was in my knee, uh, like overnight, left my entire knee. I know this sounds crazy, even the doctors look at me weird when I say this, but this is what happened. The inflammation completely just left my knee and took over my left foot. Took over it so much that I was right back to where I was in 2019. My entire foot was completely fucked. So the medicine that I normally take for this sort of stuff just wasn't cutting it. it wasn't making any inflammation go away. It wasn't making any improvements after a couple days. So I said to my wife, we need to go to the hospital. It's a challenge because I can't put any pressure on my foot. And we live on the top floor of a townhouse. <laughs> so here's me. I had to crawl from my bedroom, crawl down the stairs of our house, and then was able to use crutches to get out the front door. Now, there's also some pretty significant drops and steps uh, in the different levels of the main floor and then to get out to the car. So that was a bit, that was a bit of fun. <laughs> And then getting in the car as well was also a bit of a challenge. And then of course, getting out, getting into a wheelchair, it was, it was quite the process of actually just getting to a hospital. But we knew at least when I got to a hospital, there'd be a wheelchair that could be wheeled around and it would make things a lot easier. Oh, I'm so sorry. So the nurses and the doctors, they assessed it. They looked over, tried to figure out what was going on, did what they could, you know, based on my history and stuff with rheumatoid and gout. Talked about the medications I've been taking to try and fight it, how they're not working. So they gave me an IV and some Toradol, which is a really strong anti-inflammatory. And it wasn't able to completely fix the problem, but it did alleviate a lot of the pain and bring down quite a bit of the swelling. So much to the point that when we got home from the hospital, I was actually able to just, I wasn't able to walk, but I could stand and put weight on my foot, which was a significant improvement. And this allowed me to go see a doctor the next day I was hoping maybe I could get like a cortisone shot in my foot to try and just knock out the rest of the swelling. Unfortunately, that's not as quick of a process for a walk-in situation as one would hope. So we got the next best thing was a prescription for this stuff called prednisone. Not something I want to be on long-term, but it's working really quickly, which is really, really nice. My foot now, I'm at least able to walk. I have to use a cane to help aid me a little bit with my weight, but I am able to walk around a little bit. Still a little bit of pain, but it's it's uh, it's night and day different from where I was three days ago at this point, even two days ago. It's been, it, unfortunately, it's been another week of next to nothing. When I'm in, when I'm in that state, when I'm just laying around, wasting away in pain, I really have a hard time wanting to record anything, wanting to speak, because I'm just, I'm trying to keep my mind elsewhere and not focus on the pain so much, even though it's ever present. So I'm just trying to keep my mind on other things. I distract myself a lot by like playing video games and stuff like that. The one thing that I do that does keep me in the mind space of what's going on is I'm constantly trying to read and understand, you know, underlying causes, different reasons, what these symptoms could possibly be as opposed to what I've been diagnosed with. And also things that I can do to improve, things that I can do to fix myself holistically without needing medication. Because ultimately that's the goal. I don't want to be on medication for the rest of my life. I want to be able to fix the root causes of everything. Just like I don't want to take Ozempic to lose weight. I don't want to take some fucking miracle drug when there's actual things that I can just do myself to improve what I have done to myself. But my mentality for everything, my weight, my blood pressure, my gout, is I want to be able to do everything as naturally as possible. And so I'm constantly trying to see what I can do. But enough of the bad news. Good news for this week is I did my weigh-in and we are down yet again. Today, 370.5 pounds. That's over 16 pounds in the four weeks now. Four pounds a week on average, it's pretty dope. Pretty happy with that. Now, as my foot gets better this week and I'm able to increase my activity again, start moving around, start walking a lot more, I do imagine we'll see possibly a slight uptick next week or maybe even just a leveling off. I don't anticipate such a drastic four pound change yet again because I think my body's gonna be filled back up with water and probably some muscle mass will get built back up a little bit, maybe a couple grams of muscle mass. Just being aware of that, that I don't imagine next week I'll be making any drastic weight changes. 
but we'll see, who knows. All I know is I am now 20 pounds away from what my weight goal was for July 8th. So I started going back to the gym around my birthday last year. So for that period from like mid-November till end of January, I was in a really good rhythm and I, that's where a lot of the weight started call, dropping off. I think I lost like around 30 pounds or something during that time. It was a really good starting point for me. And I had set up a plan for basically the next two years, kind of milestones of what weight I would be at certain points of the year. So if I can keep at this pace, and when I say this pace, I don't mean four pounds a week because that's unrealistic. That's not going to stay consistent. But I just mean this pace of consistency with my diet and being able to do as much as I can when I can. If I can keep at that, I'm convinced I'll be at 325 by my birthday, which would be great. And then that means I'll be breaking 300 sometime early next year, which would be awesome because I don't remember the last time I was under 300 pounds. I think that was somewhere maybe a decade ago. I think even before I met my wife. I don't think my wife has ever seen me under 300 pounds, to be honest with you, which is crazy. Yeah, so that's that. That's this week. But yeah, so that's this week's video. I hope next week is a little bit more entertaining and we can dive into some other stuff other than just, hey, I just spent the last week being in pain and laying around doing nothing all week. How you been? But again, thanks so much for checking in. Please like, subscribe, share the... Please like and subscribe. Hit the little bell so you'll get notified when the next pod... For fuck please like and subscribe and hit the little bell for the notification for the next for the, for the next fucking thing that does stuff please like and subscribe and hit the little bell so you get a notification when the next video drops and i will see you guys next monday peace <laughs>